Manchester United are doing bits on the market as per deluded two weeks ago when we actually broke the story that it was a double done deal between Jason Wilcox and Dan Ashworth. So this is just a little bit of a follow up what's been said in the minor details. At the end of the day, we are so glad that the big boys are starting to pick up and saying that Fabrizio Romano also saying that Jason Wilcox is nailed on and some other minor reports are saying that Wilcox was going to Liverpool and that Dan Ashworth's appointment is in danger but well, I'm here to say that is not the case two weeks ago we did a general report to say it, the deal is done in principle it's final details in terms of negotiations in terms of Dan Ashworth what's going on with that please stick around for the couple of seconds and you will find out what is going on. Has the Premier League ever been more challenging? I feel welcome. Uh, this is my home and I want to achieve success. Okay. Feeling fine like red wine this morning on this day of recording, which is Tuesday the 2nd. So April's Fool's Day is over. And tell me, how do you feel? Because Manchester United are playing at the Stamford Bridge on Thursday. But we're here to talk about Dan Ashworth. We are here to talk about Jay Wilcox as well. Wilcox, Wilcox, Wilcox. Of course, we are here to talk about Wilcox because yesterday broke in the socials by Fabrizio Romano to say that he is nailed on. And we said on this channel two weeks ago when we did a breaking news that it's a double done deal. Why is it so? Well, a certain sense that, you know, the appointment of Jason Wilcox, both Wilcox and Ashwood was a strong recommendation from Omar Barada. The ones that have been handling these negotiations while Ashwood or Barada has been on a garden leave is none other than Jean-Claude Blanc and Dave Brailsworth. And, you know, Jason Wilcox comes with a strong recommendation from Omar Barada as they used to work with each other on, in city groups. So there is a correlation link. As previous mentioned, Wilcox will be a swift transition has been reported in the media that all of a sudden Southampton wants 12 months compensation. Well, that is normal. It's called, you know, notice period. And it's pretty much paying off Wilcox at the end of the day for missing out this compensation if you want him swiftly on board. Because there's a general feeling that Wilcox will be technical director as primary in the job title, looking after the youth academy, but also acting as the acting sporting director while Dan Ashwood is starting. The yeah, Manchester United are working hard to get Dan Ashwood in for the summer, and Newcastle's interest also lies the same because they also need to get in their sporting directors that they can plan for the summer ahead. So whatever it's been in stalemate, it's all come down to the compensation. As per reported last time, the last compensation figure that I heard was 15 million total, means 10 million for Newcastle in terms of they paid 5 million for Ashward when they snubbed um, you know, Brighton, they took him from Brighton and, and put him in the seat where he is today. So they're seeking 10 million and 5 million will go to Ashwood for missing out that, you know, remaining of the compensation while he's serving his garden leave. Um, as far as I understood, this has been completed two weeks ago in terms of negotiations. There are some final nitty gritty. Um, and it's not a question of when or how, it's about question and when the club will actually announce it and I do suspect that for some weird reason United want to finish off the season and then do the proper announcement for both Ashwood and you know Wilcox but at the end of the day like you know it is what it is we are going back to the top by the sounds of it uh, speaking to the intermediate market agents market they're representing you know these clients they pretty much say that, you know, for Wilcox's case was not a stepping down. It was a step up. You know, he left City, you know, as, you know, head of development for the academy and did a fantastic job, you know, bringing in likes of uh, Phil Foden, bringing the likes of, uh, you know, Jack Grealish into the ra range and stuff like that. So impeccable, impeccable and working very close with Omar Barada, working hand in hand. So definitely this was a recommendation from Omar Barada's side. 
Now, what's been told is that, of course, this is quite normal. It's Manchester United knocking on the door regarding, you know, Wilcox. But at the end of the day, it will be a swift transition over because what's been told is that he's going to be handled the academy and being the technical director, meaning that Darren Fletcher will be moving aside. And then the next in line will be moving as soon as Ashwood comes in will be John Murtai. So nothing strange about this business as usual, but Manchester United are kind of looking to move up on the top. In terms of handling the recruitment, Wilcox is led to believe that he will be in before the summer and helping out Omar Barada and the rest of the team in terms of the recruitment matters. And once Ashwell comes in, Ashwell will take over as per usual, as per his job description. Um, in terms of compensation, it's really unknown if Manchester United have been paying it or not been paying it. They've been very, very uh, keeping a quite tight lid. Uh, information doesn't really come out from the India sporting camp at the moment. But what matters for them is what I've been told is that they get their first targets in as swift as possible. So a lot of things to get excited about, to be honest. And in terms of who is on the next, well, hold your horses. Um, another swift appointment where you are looking at, uh, if you're looking at the hierarchy order in how you appoint, it's starting from the top as what deluded before Omar Barada as the CEO, Dan Ashwood as the technical director, and then you will have Jason Wilcox starting as the technical director or academy director player development. But next in line is the head of recruitment. And there's been some names thrown in the ring, but the latest that I thought and the easiest one that's going to be swift for Manchester United is no other than Julian Ward. There's been Dougie Freeman looking at, they've been looking at Dougie Freeman so so lukewarm but julian ward from liverpool has done a fantastic job there as well and the reason to say that this will be a swift transition over as soon as everything is been appointed above this will be the next target is because he's out of job at the moment he can start asap there will be no garden leave there will be no compensation packages whatsoever as he left his position over 12 months ago i believe even 18 months ago in dispute with fsg at liverpool so he is one to look after 100 percent. keep your eyes on him because that will be a swift transition from united doesn't going to cost him any money but he comes with a very good pedigree cv in terms of bringing the likes of darwin nunes uh, Luis Diaz and many, many more, including he was even involved bringing in more satellites as well. So this guy has a noise for international talent, but also domestic talent as well. At the end of the day, we will do a further dive deep podcast. But if you want to have a look at the two weeks video that we did, please go back to this video as well. What we have the thumbnail double done deal, which is more in detail explained. Um, as per se, we are here to sort of present our findings for an educational purpose that we do care about a club as what we want Manchester United to get back to the winning ways. We want us to go back to the top. It's nothing sensational. It's for you, some of you, it's exciting that we are actually doing the right thing, building from the top, going all the way down to the bottom. And in terms of the managerial position, well, even Chelsea are now reporting that they're going to sack their manager. So it's going to be a summer um, with a void of good pedigree managers to choose from. And Ten Hag's job, as we know it, is still safe until now. Why? Because he's got one year left on his contract. So they might wait another year and see how it goes with the right structure. And if it doesn't go well, well, there's another year passed and there might be another top target manager available that Ineos really like. Anyway, this has been Mick Ruby here from MUFC Realist TV, uh, giving you a brief update. Please leave your comment in the comment section below, as I do love to read your comments and hear other opinions as well. Until then, just like and subscribe. We shall see you to the next video. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MUFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.